so like Minority Report. No, Arresting no. people, get, removing their rights before they commit a crime. No, so not removing their rights yeah, before that's what they you commit said. a crime. It's going to be taking away their access to weapons that they can use to kill people, right? Or to commit before these they've killed anybody. Abuse. Well, yeah, because so before they've committed crimes. So yeah. what you're proposing is looking for indicators that someone might commit a violent crime and removing their access to firearms before they commit it. Yes. How is that not Minority Report? <laughs> Time for the latest installment of Change My Mind, where we rationalize our views on controversial topics. In context, in full, unedited. As always, comment below your thoughts on this video's topics or what subjects you'd most like to see for future installments. This go around, we went to UT Austin and cycled through as many topics as time allotted, except this time, there's a little twist. There's gonna be a twist today. I'm not going to be talking with anyone. You guys are gonna be talking amongst each other. Now, the Dean of Student Activities wasn't very fond of this new approach, however, and uh, we immediately were warned that our permit would be revoked. Yeah, it's I don't- To I get know. removed is what I'm telling you, just FYI. <laughs> this different format, like, they're, they're, they're putting their foot down and they're saying it can't happen. So, uh, little, little hiccup here. We're trying to make sure that this is okay to go. The uh, Dean of the Student Activities may pull our permit to be here if two students come up and converse. Apparently, it's only okay if I sit down and talk with somebody, but it's a problem if you both sit down and talk with each other. We're going to see if we can work it out. Uh, if not, we're gonna have to uh, change the format and hopefully do something. I can ask about that. Okay, that may be let's see if we could do that to yeah. start with. Because of uh, some permit issues, some miscommunications, we cannot have both students sit down. So we kind of have to jerry-rig it. We'll have one person sit here, and then we'll have one person uh, behind the rope and uh, they're going to have this conversation right now to rationalize their positions. With a workaround in place, we started up, and right away we had a good run of productive civil dialogue between students. If you want to manifest your own identity or your own way of being perceived or perceiving yourself, I think you should be able to do that without people saying that it's not natural. I could go around wearing a dress if that's what I particularly wanted to but do. But are you still a boy then? Because you have a penis, I, I don't assume. Steven, I gotta love you. You're a much better looking person in real life than you are in video. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. Well, you look, like, I thought you weighed 50 pounds more than you did. Oh. I, 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 most people are going to see him on the screen. Of course, as always, we had our share of detractors. I don't want to then, then, then to safety this comes kind in and like fear goes out. Horrible organization. I don't want to promote I, it I in don't. any way. I'm uncomfortable because students don't feel safe on their own campus. It's been reclaimed. Change my mind. What? What? What, what did he? What did he say? Listen. Okay. Hold, hold, hold on one second. Hold up. Hold on one second. I didn't hear that either. Hold on. Pa pause. Listen. Pause. Pause. Listen. Okay. It's very hard for us to get permits. Right now, we're trying to get two students to have a discussion that's civil from wildly differing viewpoints. I think that's happened thus far. Even though you disagree, it's been pretty respectful. The only person to shout out someone is a f***ing idiot is you. Just do me a favor, do me a favor. Don't be an asshole your whole life, okay? Yeah, let's bring him up here. So we did. Yeah, definitely not gonna change anybody's mind. I just wanted to talk on the mic, honestly. Oh, okay. So you just wanted to waste people's time. I mean, you waste a lot of people's time on YouTube, let's be real. Really? Yeah. I force people to watch me on YouTube? Nobody forces you, but a lot of people use your videos as evidence for why they're right when, like, it's literally just circular arguing the show. Yeah, I, I know what that feels like. Now I should go watch yours. All right, thanks, man. Now, I won't lie, this installment was harder for me as I had to bite my tongue all day. Like you asked, that how many genders there are, we don't need to define that. There can be an infinite number of genders. It's all about what you define. That doesn't mean I'm a unicorn, right, obviously. Those people are called furries, they exist. Life is literally a concept. As always, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment below, and most importantly, join Mug Club at lottowithcrider.com slash mug club to support segments like these. Not only do you get access to daily exclusive shows not seen on YouTube, but it's the only way for this kind of content to continue. On with the show, meet Michael and Sean, two students on opposing sides of the Second Amendment. Both were chomping at the bit to get in on any of our topics of the day, uh, which isn't usually a good sign, but we hoped for the best. I'm worried about you coming up. I'm really worried about you coming up. Like seriously, I'm telling you, because usually when someone comes up who's as, who's as jazzed up as you are, it doesn't go very well. All right, I can calm down. Can you? Do you think you got reasonable arguments here that you can present and you're not gonna name call? 
Do you think you're ready? This, this guy seems pretty sharp too. You're gonna be going. You're gonna be going up. He throws up on YouTube with a really sharp guy. You feel qualified to do the Second Amendment thing? I do. Okay. Yeah, All right. Woo. Right now, this is going to be on the Second Amendment. I'm pro gun. Change my mind. And um, we will uh, let them go ahead and do it. Okay, what's your name, sir? Michael. Michael, Michael, come here and have a seat, sir. All right, and your name, sir, is? Sean. Sean, nice to meet you, Sean. Michael, okay. So, uh, Michael, you're familiar with this segment, how it works. State your position in the affirmative and allow Sean to uh, change your mind. So, Sean, I feel that the Second Amendment in the United States is uh, critically important to both the security of the nation as well as the uh, historical culture of the United States. And I feel that a lot of the measures taken or interest in um, restricting the Second Amendment further than it already is are generally unfounded. Sure. And I'd welcome you to change my mind. Cool. So let's first talk about like the culture uh, that it has within America. So you're saying that like, oh, the Second Amendment's critical because it's been historically important, but we can both agree that the Second Amendment's been pulled back as history's moved on in order to like adjust with societal changes, right? So like the Second Amendment as it is today, theoretically can change tomorrow depending on what we think is best for society. The Second Amendment as an amendment, amendments can be Yeah, sure, changed. so I just want to, we can, can agree. I don't yeah. think it should be though. Okay, but it can be like rolled back, right? It, it could, but I shouldn't. Okay. You so, could take well, seatbelts out of cars, but you shouldn't. Sure. So let's, well, I would argue adding restrictions is more akin to adding seatbelts into cars crashing into wildly places. But let's go ahead and talk about what restrictions we should add on. So would you agree that we should have more background checks, for example, a screen for mental illness? Um... I, th I think that a, a screen for mental illness would be would be rather well. I will tell you that there already is a federal background check required to buy. Sure, but it, it's not screening mental illness, correct? It's not looking at your medical history, for example. Um, I, I my understanding is it is. Could you could you fill in on that? Do you, no, I mean, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just say that like the part of the platform currently that the DNC is running on is putting adding on more background checks, screening for different mental. Okay, I'll say actually it, it does. Okay, in it what does. way does I, it? I wasn't crazy. It, have you? Okay, uh, but I won't. I'll, I'll talk afterwards. But it does. It, 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 I only think this is important just because yeah. he asked, and you just said it's true. But it's what you said. I mean, is, it doesn't look into people's medical history, past medical history, correct? Sure, not something as extensive okay. as looking into so someone's that, private that's, medical that's history. That's what I'm advocating is looking into okay. past medical history. That's what the current platform is: is looking at history of mental illness and screening for that. Would you agree that's reasonable? I would agree that that's reasonable. But okay. Not, but a follow-up question I'd ask to that is, what did, what mental illnesses? would constitute not allowing people to have guns and which ones wouldn't because then you go get in the dicey territory of well you know I mean, some that that would be up to I mean obviously that would be up to legislators and individual implementation and we'd see what would work best but like for example if someone has like a history of schizophrenia or a history of paranoid delusion or a history of like um, I don't know, a, a history of being abusive, stuff like that would be what you would be trying to screen for. Like maybe indicators that psychologists would say could lead to future spousal abuse, stuff like that. So say like someone hasn't committed abuse yet, but they have psychologists who have screened them and said this person is a high risk candidate, we should be able to restrict their gun access. So you want to so you want to put the weight of gun access and that decision upon psychologists? Yeah, I think that science and like psychologists and professionals who have studied this and know the indicators for what will lead to these mass shootings should be the ones who are deciding who can actually have access to these guns. And I mean, you can make it as uh, bipartisan as you want. You can have conservative psychologists and liberal oh, yeah. psychologists on a panel. <laughs> um, but I think that psychologists being part of that process is critical because we need to do something unless these gun uh, gun deaths are going to continue within I, the United I, I States. I think a quick look at the at the um, pooling of, of college professors and, and colleges in general would show that. I didn't say college professors. Not, I just said professional psychologists. Well, yeah, but but and college professors become uh, unless become you're saying student. none exist or you're somehow advocating that the field of psychology is. Part Partisan, then I don't think you have a point. Do, is the field of psychology partisan? Yes, it, the field of psychology is based as well on as what? Well, do you, I mean, it's based on it's based on polling, right? There's there's men, the the least. I mean, the two points to that would be one ac like across the United States, the least partisan um, college field is business, of which co liberal college professors outnumber conservative college professors by right. four. But to that's because facts have a liberal bias. But when we're talking about I, like, actual professionals, we can have a partisan, bipartisan panel deciding this. And regardless, you already agreed that screening for mental illness is a critical part of gun regulation. How that's implemented is a different debate. We've already but, but agreed they, to but, pull but back I, and change the way the You're right, we did agree works. that. We also agreed that cool. mental illness is already screened for so, so outside of, of, of you, so going into a deep personal Do you want to go, 
let's, of let's talk about a different regulation. So, do okay. you know what happened in Australia with the gun buyback program? Yes. Okay, so what happened with all the mass shootings occurring within that country after their gun buyback program? They went down at the exact same rate that they were going down before the No, buyback. no, no, no. Mass shootings. There has not been a single mass shooting within Australia since their gun buyback program. No, I'm not talking about the like general homicide rate. And what's I'm talking the about mass of a mass shooting. I, whatever the standard definition that Pew Research because uses. Because there's a lot of studies out there that define a mass shooting of a shooting of which more than three or more people are. Oh, and are and you you and agreed I, that the homicide rate is going down in Australia, correct? It was going down at the exact same rate before the violence. Okay, so the homicide rate's going down. And we haven't had a single mass shooting, according to data from Pew Research. You can look at what, however, they're defining that. But clearly, it's done the, it's had the effect needed of stopping these mass shootings, right? No, I don't agree. With okay, that. wait, wait. So what's what's the negative of the gun buyback program? Well, the negative of the gun buyback program is, first of all, you have to decide what guns exactly you're going to be buying. Now, which I can quite imagine that because all of the guns that are currently legal, I would highly advocate art should be legal. Buyback for handguns. Buyback for handguns. Okay, yeah. so you've now. So if you buy, have a buyback for handguns, would you also be okay with a buyback for rifles, things that aren't defined as handguns? I, I'm just, I'll just argue handguns right now, because you can argue rifles have like aspects of hunting and stuff, and that's just a different territory. No one uses rifles in mass shootings. It's mostly um, fully automatic rifles or handguns. <laughs> well, that's that's not, that's also not accurate. Rifle, rifles are, are um, oftentimes used in mass shootings. But not, the majority the of them are done with like automatic the weapons. Vet, the, automatic weapon. Would you mind doing me a favor? Could you hold the microphone for yeah, yourself yeah, yeah, for a second? Sure. All right, go ahead. You guys continue. Can someone pass me my notepad and pen? <laughs> go ahead, continue. All right, but if you're going to if you're going to make counterpoints to me, you better make it to me and not to a fictional person. Absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I, I lost where we were. Sorry, so we were continue. About a gun buyback program. So they had it in Australia. We saw a massive decrease in the amount of um, shootings, or in the mass shootings happening within the country. So that's a good effect. So were there any negative effects of the gun buyback program in Australia? Yes, people had their weapons confiscated. Okay, and what's the negative of people having their weapons confiscated? Well, in this case of the United States, it's our Second Amendment right to have. Okay, no, no, but I asked for like a negative. What is the tangible negative of people having their gun backs? I said tangible positive, no mass shootings. Now you have to tell me a tangible negative. It reduces people's ability to defend themselves. Okay, so do you know how many people are able to stop mass shootings with a gun? Because you're saying people will defend themselves. Stop I want, I want to so how many the people head. stop mass shootings? No, no, I'm just, it's a question. Do you know how many people? You can't do this. Sorry. You do have to let the guy answer the question. I understand that this works in you know. I just you're pivoting, so I just want yeah. To I know, say, I know you're yeah. pivoting, but that's really no, not something that's that's right to do. Because so. it's question pivot. It's not question pivot. It's no, I feel like answer. actually, let's just make sure if you ask a question. Yeah. No, no. Go let ahead. him answer, answer the question. I will not talk. He answers. Yes, because yeah. again, this is kind of like attack and defend, where true. he stated a position in the affirmative. Yeah. No, no. You're right. You're, you're right. looking to change his mind. Yes. True. Right. You're not looking to just go rat tat 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 and say that he's wrong. You're right. Okay. Go ahead. Ask your question, and then you can answer. Um. How many people stop mass shootings with a gun? I don't know the exact statistical number on the number of people who stop mass shootings with a gun. Do you think that it's a lot, or what do you think it is? I know that for general crime, there are statistics that say that on the low end, there's as many as 400,000 crimes stopped with defensive use of handguns in the United States. Sure. Um, and well, those, that's a wide estimate because it's hard to define that. Mm -hmm. But the low end is significantly higher than the number of murders caused by guns in the United States. Okay, well, by, when we're talking about mass shootings, it's one every 30 years is stopped by an individual handgun. Sorry, my bad. Where? Like in, uh, in America. In, in the United yeah. States. One every, one every 30 years is stopped with a handgun. Okay, so... Or with a, with a gun in general. With a gun in general. Yeah. Okay, so... We talked a lot about we talked a lot about mass shootings. Yeah. I'm unfortunately I'm not 100 percent familiar with the mass shooting statistics in Australia, but I would sure. like to talk about the United States. And well, I just bring that up as an example of where they implemented the program and it worked, right? Okay, so I would like to talk about one my first of all. Let's get back to the United States. Sure. And let's get back to to murders because the truth is is that mass shootings actually constitute a very 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 small portion of the number of gun murders in the United States. True. Yeah. Um. So. The problem I have with the gun buyback program is that it's not actually a buyback because the gun, the, 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 yeah. the government uses their money to buy your guns back. Yeah. Where did the government get that money? From taxpayers. So I paid the government to buy my gun back. From. Yeah, in essence. Which means they're not buying my gun back, they're just taking my gun back. And, yeah, and I'm, I'm not arguing this from an economic it. point of view. I'm arguing it for a benefit to society as in, like, murder rates for mass shootings point of view, right? And, like, sure, you can, like, argue that I guess the wealthy people or, like, the top 1% are going to pay a larger portion of the gun buyback. But, I mean, like, I, I'm fine with that if you are. 
I mean, no, I, I wouldn't be fine with that. But if you want to send it away from okay. economics, I'm fine with it. So, you, you, you talk about mass shootings. Can, can we talk a little bit about, about just gun violence yeah, and sure. gun murders? Um, because, because again, mass shootings are, if you want to save lives, yeah. uh, mass shootings are a very small portion. Yeah. So, how, do, do you know how many murders there are in the United States committed, committed with, with guns? No, I just know that the number has been going down consistently. It's it, it's it's about it's it's any, it's from ten to twenty thousand. Okay. All right, the number of the number, the number of deaths from guns is about forty, but about about half of that is suicides. So yeah. I think we could put suicides. Suicide, aside. yeah. Well, we can actually talk about suicides yeah, later if you want. Okay. You're so kind of diff drifting it. So it's okay. we put suicides aside. There's about, about twenty thousand gun deaths in the United States. Yeah. The vast majority of those are committed with handguns. Okay. Yeah. The vast majority. So would you propose a, a system of buying back handguns? Yeah, that's what I proposed initially. Okay, so you're not, so so would you buy back handguns? So right now, you buy back handguns, would you also buy back rifles? No, I said before, I think rifles have other uses and they're not used to commit crimes like you're talking about, so, or in mass shootings as much as like handguns or like semi-automatic weapons or so stuff So you're like not that. okay with people owning handguns? You are okay with people owning ar no, because air. I mean, we can talk about AR-15. And AR-15 is a rifle. Right. Sure, but we're talking about like, I, I guess we can talk about like specific types of rifles and okay. which ones are more common. I used. think we're getting a little off because in the weeds the point, here. The point I'm trying to make here is that you're not really advocating for a buyback of a certain type of gun or any common sense gun control in order to to get rid of to get rid of these types of guns. You really want to get rid of all the guns, right? I want to do whatever is going to most decrease the amount of crime within the United States and decrease the amount of shootings occurring. They because saw, something needs to be done, otherwise they're going to keep And happening. you would say confiscating all guns would be a way to do that. Yeah. They I mean, did in that, the end, they did that in the UK. You know what happened? What happened in the UK? With well, their it, buyback program, I imagine the homicide rates kept going down just like you after, stated. Immediately after the UK banned handguns, um, the next two years the number of handgun deaths rose. And now since then, the number of stabbings and knife deaths has just risen. Okay, but how many people are killed within one stabbing versus one shooting, right? So when you're talking about, like, say, like, if stabbings is increasing or, like, the number of people being hit by a truck is the, increasing, the that, those are much, like, less occurring things than shootings, and those are also much You can much kill a lot less. of people okay. with a truck, dude. Yeah. yeah. But that okay, once I think we're getting a little bit off the beam here. Let's go back, final kind of closing statements. I think what's really important here is um, the nature of something, right? The essence of something. When we're talking about the Second Amendment. So you've talked about kind of, okay, handguns and then maybe rifles and then maybe these sort of background checks, which maybe I support, maybe I don't. The essence of the Second Amendment is what do you two both fundamentally disagree? I'm seeing that you both fundamentally disagree on the precept of the Second Amendment. If that's the case, then a lot of this is just mental gymnastics and pointless. So closing statements, uh, your view on the Second Amendment and why you are pro-Second Amendment. The reason why I'm pro Second Amendment is because I don't believe it's the government's duty to protect us from each other, right? I believe that when you when you take what there, there's an idea, right? In in, in your line of, of of going off the road, you go to your family, go to social institutions, whether that's your church, whether that's your community, whatever it is, local, state, federal government. The federal government should have very little to do with anything, and I am not comfortable with leaving the protection of all of us to the federal government. I don't think that they have the wisdom, I don't think that they have the mental wherewithal to decide that sort of thing. Okay. And Good. Yeah, wrap, wrap it up. Okay. Sean? Yeah, and so I would take almost the exact opposite point is that one of the primary goals of government is to defend ourselves. That's like one of the, is to protect the American citizens, is to protect it's us to from protect each other, is to make, well, let me, let, yeah, but it's, it's to protect the American okay. citizens from foreign and domestic enemies, and it's to keep us safe. And that is one of the primary goals of the U.S. government. And so I think that anything that we can show that can tangibly decrease the amount of violence and tangibly save lives should be implemented because that's what the founding fathers, fathers want is a constitution that changes with the times and adapts to what is best for the people of this country. Okay, great. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Can I sit down with you for a second? Yeah. Do you, want, you want to stick around and talk? I know you were... All right, I'll, I'll sit down with you for a second. Okay. Mike, right? Yeah. Mike. All right, how did you feel that conversation went? Um, I felt I wasn't as familiar with the exact um, uh, effects of, of the buyback as specific to mass shootings as I wish I could have been. Yeah. Right. So would you say that he was uh, he, he did pretty well? He did do very well, yeah. Okay. Did this surprise you? Um, no, I knew, I knew what I was, I was going up against somebody who knew what they had, knew what they were doing. Okay. Now the reason I ask you, and I don't want to, I don't want you at all to feel like I'm throwing you under the bus at all. But the reason you saw I asked you beforehand, 
because you were going, meet, meet, you really, really wanted to yeah. come in. In my experience, the people typically who are most eager to step in and debate are po probably the people who should pump the brakes a little bit okay. and wait. Let me tell you something. Before I sit down every single time here, I almost have to go change my pants. Sometimes I go to the bathroom to throw up because I get so nervous because I feel as though I might be ill-prepared. Or I feel as though I may not be able to present a log uh, the most logical argument. Or I feel as though there may be something that I'm not anticipating, right? And that I wasn't Typically, anticipating that. Yeah, I think... Uh, it didn't seem like you were nervous coming in at all. You were really chomping at the bit to come in. I was, I was nervous, I think, a few hours ago, but as I kind of settled in and, yeah. and, and got rid of that. And in my experience, people who really just want to get in and mix it up um, don't tend to be the most prepared. I think you both had some valuable arguments. I think that you probably could have presented some more valuable arguments if there was a little bit more of a healthy fear and healthy respect for someone on the yeah. other side of you. And I say this as someone who would largely agree with your view on the Second Amendment. Um, but uh, maybe going forward, you think going forward you might take a different tact? Absolutely. And maybe also, um, get, I think what we saw a lot of here was there wasn't a lot of dead air space in the sense that you just kept going, 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 and no one was really listening to each other. You know what I mean? You were both kind of going rat, tat, 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 and a lot of points were missed. But, man, I do appreciate uh, the ball that it takes to sit here out in the hot sun all day doing this. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Thank you brother. I appreciate it. And I think... Oh, are you jumping on the thing? Yeah. Sorry. The cords? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Sean, yeah, why don't you come up here? Because I know you've been chomping at the bit. Hi, Sean. Hey. Nice to meet you. So nice I know, because earlier you were really pretty, pretty zealous and wanting to uh, I, I come in and talk show. with me. Okay. I like your show. Do you mind, do you mind sitting yeah. kind of? Do you mind moving forward and sure. getting in close to the microphone here? I'll use my handheld mic to try and help you out. But um, how did you think that conversation went with Mike? I think it went pretty well. I, I enjoyed talking to him. I think, um, like when you mentioned that I was interrupting a little bit too much, I think I was getting a little overzealous with the CX, so I probably could have waited a second. Yeah, I appreciate it's just, that. When, whenever I feel, felt like I heard that he was trying not to answer a question, I interrupted, but I know I shouldn't have done that. No, I, I appreciate you recognizing that. It did get a little bit heated, and I yeah. felt like you guys were talking over each other no, yeah, rather than with each other. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you want you sat and you really wanted... What just happened here? That's embarrassing. Don't worry, it happens to lots of guys. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't. That's a lie. It happens to very few. They're failures as men. Um, and I was sitting there, and I really did not want to jump in at all. Um, I... I, I I am pro Second Amendment. This seemed like it was a subject that you really wanted to come in on that you were passionate about. Yeah. Um, do you kind of? I started taking some notes at one point. And I don't want to be unfair. I want to see first how you thought that conversation went because I just yeah. sat down with Mike and asked that. What would you change about it if you could go back? Uh, like I said, maybe during like CX, whenever I asked a question, just pulling back and allowing him time to respond. Yeah. Because I shouldn't probably shouldn't have tried to like intervene when I thought he was pivoting. I should have just allowed him to go on and then maybe restated the question or something. Would have sure. been a better tact. And I don't know if you heard what I just told Mike. Yeah. But often in my experience, the people who are the most oh, we need to get it closer. Just down a bit. Hold on one second here. You're good. Damn it, Wade. <laughs> Come on, Wade. <laughs> and is it out? No. Better? Right. Yeah. Often people who are the most, um, I would say, sort of overzealous, chomping at the bit to get in the microphone, are the people who are the least prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, like I've always said, I am always very, very scared. I get very scared before any kind of public speaking. Yeah. Um, I get scared before I come out and do this. A, because I don't want to get shot or stabbed, you know, and that's always a part of the equation. Got that but open B, also. Can't carry on huh. UT, so. Oh, that's well, right, yeah. yeah. Um, which I don't know where you line up on that. Uh, but uh, I also want to make sure that the arguments are at least as close to airtight as I can get them. I always want to make sure that I'm not, because I'm not only representing my point of view, we're often representing the points of view of our political ilk, right? Yeah. And we don't want to misrepresent them. Um, you were really chomping at the bit to get on the debate here, too. Mm -hmm. So were you nervous or you really thought you had this in the bag? I mean, sure, you're, no, you're always nervous of whether or not you know enough or whether they'll bring up something that you haven't heard of before. And it's kind of just like... I, I mean, you have to just kind of get past that in order to public speak, like you were saying, like be able to compose yourself and just put yourself forward. So I agree with that, yeah. Do you speak publicly a lot? Do you do, do you argue with people a lot? Um, I did debate throughout high school. I'm currently pre-med, so I don't do a lot of that anymore. Mostly just science stuff, okay. organic chemistry, which is a lot less fun than getting to debate people. But you seem pretty experienced in it. You seem pretty confident in doing it. Sure, yeah, I enjoy it. Okay. And would you say that you've done that quite a bit? And you're throughout throughout high school, yeah, I did that, yeah. And would you say that most people probably would describe you as somebody who's articulate? Would your friends probably say, like, oh, I don't get into it with Sean. He knows what he's talking about. My friends are all in debate, too, so they enjoy getting into okay, it with so me. Okay, so they enjoy yeah. getting into it. But typically speaking, you probably, when it comes to a conversation like this among friends or on campus, you're probably the more qualified or more capable debater. I mean, I'm not one to say that, but, like, 
don't know. As a general? That's, that's what I see. Opinion. Okay, yeah. So would you... Would you? I mean, yeah, if you see that, sure. Yeah, yeah. that's I don't what I would see. <laughs> but the reason I say this is because I see some problems with that, too. Just kind of sure. like I was talking with Mike, where he came and I think he thought he was a little more prepared than he was. Yeah. I think you being... Um, very intelligent, I can tell, being supremely confident, allows you to get away with some, uh, not only sort of logical fallacies, and I don't mean that you were doing it deliberately, mm -hmm. but you were quoting some facts and statistics that just aren't true, and I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to tip the scales there, mm -hmm. but I think that sometimes if you go rat tat 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 you know, you fire it off, people yeah. just don't necessarily call you on it. Um, and that is what I saw there. Would you, would you go back and think of anything that maybe you said that may not have been necessarily entirely accurate, that someone as formidable of an opponent as maybe yourself might have called you on? I mean, I the only, the one primary thing that I said that was incorrect was when he said, "Do you want? would you restrict rifles? And my instant go-to was no, because I was just thinking hunting and stuff. But as he rightly pointed out, AR-15s would be a semi-automatic, and I would be in favor of banning those. So maybe like when he asked that question, taking a step back and thinking about it for a moment yeah. would have been a good part on mine, and not just kind of being reactionary. I actually appreciate that you recognize yeah. that, because um, you actually said that uh, there are no mass shootings using rifles. Yeah, yeah, no, I realized when he pointed out that the AR-15 was classified, I was like, oh, yeah, no, the semi-automatic yeah. weapons. But uh, the, and, it, and it's an interesting argument because, yes, the vast majority of crimes are often committed with handguns, right? Yeah. And typically the anti-gun lobby, they I want to get rid of handguns. Yeah. That being said, there have been mass shootings committed with rifles. True, yeah. So that was one thing that you said, and I was sitting there going, oh, I thought he was going to call you on it. He didn't. That's yeah. not accurate. No, yeah, and I, I recognize that. Um, something else that you started off, and I just say this because this might change the landscape when sure. you have a conversation with someone yeah. who might be a little more, more qualified. I'm not trying to sandbag you, and you can volley any questions at me. Yeah. Uh, you guys started off, and one of the first things you talked about was that there are no mental background checks. Yeah, yeah. That's not true. Right. Now, if you talk about going into someone's medical history, so in other words, yeah. if you want to purchase, Th that's what I was talking purchase about. a firearm, yeah. they get access to all of your personal and private medical right. records. Yes, that exactly. being said, have you, have you ever purchased a firearm? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay, so you don't know what the form looks like? No. Okay, I mean, like my, I have run a quick search and you'll, you'll it. see. Yeah. It, shows, no, it actually asks if you've been uh, adjudicated mentally defective. Sure, right. And so, so there is an official standard bearer yeah. of mentally defective. and I under, yeah. So I think that... If he'd have called, then you could have had a different conversation. You saying it's a sliding scale mm -hmm. that I think psychologists should determine that, mm -hmm. not a court of law. Right, but when when yeah, so when we yeah when we talk about that, like you were saying that I said psychologists should determine that. I think that they should go into the actual medical records and determine whether or not someone has been showing indicators toward that type of behavior, as opposed to just being tried and convicted of like as you said having like on their legal transcript right. mentally or I, what was the exact term you said? Uh, adjudicated. I think I think the term is adjudicated mentally defective. Yeah, adjudicated mentally defective so I think that that doesn't catch people who have like for example been giving indicators of domestic abuse in the past mm -hmm. but a psychologist on the other hand would which is why I was arguing for more extensive background sure um, so like minority report uh, arresting no, people like, removing their rights before they commit a crime no so not removing their rights before yeah that's what they you commit said a crime it's going to be taking away their access to weapons that they can use to kill people right or to commit before they've domestic killed anybody. abuse well, yeah, because so before they've committed crimes. Yeah, because when you're talking about like domestic abuse cases, it's not a crime until it happens, and you want to catch that before it happens. And so you're not going to give somebody who's showing all these indicators for domestic abuse. So let me, access hold on, so let me ask you. So yeah. what you're proposing is looking for indicators that someone might commit a violent crime, and removing their access to firearms before they commit it. Yes. How is that not Minority Report? <laughs> because in Minority Report, they were like they were. Pre arresting people but based on like whether or not they would commit a crime not saying oh you can't have a gun if you're going to commit a crime i think the movie minority report would have been very different if they said oh you're going to commit a crime here i'm just like not going to give you an ar-15 right because right. those people who are going to commit murder if you take away the gun they decide to uh run a cooking show um I mean, you no, asked so uh, something else you asked how many people shoot anyone. something else you said um how many people stop mass shootings? So that was something you said. No one stopped mass shootings with guns. I no, think you said yeah. one in, one every 30 yeah, years. Yeah, that was a Mother Jones ran that study. Uh, yeah. Well, it's not right. Okay, well, what is right? Okay, so a couple of things here. And I just say this because, again, yeah. these are things where if you're talking with someone who knows what they're talking about, sure. they're going to call you on it, right? Well, I mean, if, you can argue with the Mother Jones study that crunched the numbers within the United States, but I'm just citing... Yeah, I can tell you right? very clearly why it's wrong. But okay. first off, um, how many people stop... Because this isn't really a change my mind at this point. This was just, you know, I, I just heard so many things well, that were factually I, I inaccurate. Thought, I thought at the very least in the beginning, we did have a little bit of good change my mind where he agreed that, like, looking at people with mental health more carefully sure. was good. And then I yeah. think I got him to move a little on I that think issue. a little bit, but it was predicated on the idea that there isn't already necessarily a mental background right, but we, we, and I think that's yeah. one of those things that I think you know you're smart enough 
And I don't think you know that there's already a question on your background check. Like you said, you didn't know, right, that it asked if you've been mental, adjudicated mentally defective. No, 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 I didn't know that. So I you just threw it out that. saying there's no mental background check. And because you are intelligent, and because mm -hmm. you come across very authoritative, he kind of accepted it wholesale. Yeah, yeah. Admit that was kind of an advantage there, even sure. if it w I sure that wasn't I was, accurate. I was just familiar with what the proposal was. I wasn't familiar with, I guess, the current status. That, but it sure. was illegal, but the proposal still stands that okay. it should be further back. You don't think this is disrespectful, do you? For no, no, no. Okay, I want to make sure. I mean, yeah, so, I think uh, very respectful. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, before you asked how many people stop mass shootings, he did have that number. You know, it's it's hard to know exactly how many yeah. mass shootings are stopped, right? Yeah. Because we have an estimate, even if you look at the estimate according, I think, to the FBI and CDC, mm -hmm. between half a million to three million defensive uses of firearms each year. Yeah. And it's very hard to measure because more often than not, the firearm is simply brandished and it stops a violent crime. Yeah. Right? Um, so we don't know how many of those crimes stopped would be qualified as mass shootings. And, and this is moving. And I believe away. mass shooting is three or more, or it's four or more, depending on the country. Yeah, yeah, I think okay. that's what P says. So, in other words, out of the 500 to three million, we don't know how many mass shootings would be stopped. But you did say that one in 30 years. That comes from Mother Jones, right? Yeah. Um, are you familiar with Sutherland Springs? No. Okay. That happened right here in Texas, mm -hmm. not far from here, just in San Antonio. Are yeah, you familiar I'm, with I'm that? probably familiar with it. Yeah, just not by the name. Where the guy was shooting yeah. up uh, a church, yeah, got in his yeah, car, yeah, 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 yeah. And the man stopped him with an AR-15. He was an NRA certified instructor. Sure, okay. and that's one of the that, examples. That's happened. Of like yeah, one and there. Okay, but there are far more than that. You can <laughs> point to other examples of church shootings being stopped. You can well, point to I other mean, examples. You, I mean, you I pointed to one, right? So we. Have I pointed like one in Sutherland Springs. There was also a church shooting, I believe, in Georgia recently. Um, you can find it. I, I mean, yeah, again, you're li right. listing a study, but sure, one every thirty years is just not accurate. And and just to hit on them when you're talking about that, you're not, seeing, not to mention, by yeah. the way, we would have to say how many mass shootings are stopped by no, yeah, firearms from police gets, officers. It gets, it gets really Ultimately, like, every single mass shooting is stopped no, yeah, by a obviously firearm. Obviously, police officers should have a firearm. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's right. why when you were asking me before, am I completely against the second memo? I was like, well, we have to like discuss whether or not we should allow people who, like police officers, um, obviously, and then like maybe former military who have training in it who have already been mentally screened, stuff like that. Sure. Right. Yeah, it's more than one in 30, and I think we would have to agree that. I would, I would love to see your Mother Jones source. Yeah, uh, and, and just when talking about the number of mass shootings that are um, stopped by the Gun violence. I think that it's also important to point out that we don't know whether or not those were actually like stopped by the gun being pulled or not, or like whether that you just had a person like break into a house with a gun who's going to rob and not going to shoot anybody, and someone like ran out and he runs out of the house. Sure. Right? So I like think yeah. I think, we, I think we would both agree these, yeah. that out of the 500 to 3 million defensive uses of firearms, which are hard to track each year, sure. probably more likely that there's significantly more than one in 30 mass I'm shootings I'm just saying, if we had a caveat to my state, well, I caveat to all of them that it's hard to track. Right, but I'm saying that, that would be the caveat, that if we're saying half a million to three million uh, defensive uses of firearms each year, they typically say around two million is probably the most accurate number. Sure. Let's call it low, and let's call it 1.5 and split it down the sure. middle. If we're gonna say 1.5 million defensive uses of firearm, probably much more likely that even more than one in 30 mass shootings are stopped each day. Right, and I, I would, if I was taking this position on like legislation say, I would say that right. the police were the ones who should have stopped this, not the individual in the house. Sure. Because like you, you shouldn't, I don't think, act as an executioner. Within well, the, there were no police there and the man stopped it. He was on his way to go shoot other people in Sutherland Springs, okay. uh, for example. Like I was a Stephen uh, Williford, a, a gotcha. hero. Then you did say, uh, you talked about psychologists. Yes. Okay. So um, you asked if psychology is partisan. Mm -hmm. And you don't believe that it is. I'm, I would argue, sure, that academia has a left-leaning bias, but I don't think the study of psychology is part of it. Well, because you said that facts have a liberal bias. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you were scoring points in there, and I think I mean, you were doing that to try and intimidate him a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a line, right? Facts have a liberal bias, yeah. but like the underlying idea behind that is just that the reason that academia is left-leaning is that like the facts are lining up with okay. that, and that's why people are taking so that position. So I, I, I do. Sorry. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know. Uh, I do believe that psychology is politicized. Um, it, it is uh, partisan. Let me ask you this: When you talk about a panel of psychologists, you're talking about just a national panel or an international committee of psychologists? I, I mean, we're just talking about the United States here, right? Second Amendment. So right, I, but you did point to the Australian gun buyback. Right. So, so you pointed to just a lot as of an example, arguments. it wouldn't be international because there's. I mean, the, there is international governing bodies, but the U.S. doesn't really have to follow those by any. Like we can pretty much do what we want, right? So right. I'm more speaking like the Second Amendment. Yeah, exactly. And I think that when looking at the Second Amendment, we should see what works best. So it should be only American psychologists. You know, I, whether there should be an international uh, input committee whichever, on Whichever one reduces crime the most. Okay. Well, the reason I ask this is because psychology is an international practice, right? If you look at what uh, is determined in psychology, it's determined internationally, yeah. well, not just nationally. Yeah, so who's right? So. 
when it comes it's, to psychologists. Who's right? Uh, is it the American psychologist? Or would I mean, it be the psychologist, the DSM, for example? the standard for the Right, American, so that would be a good example. What's yeah. right, the DSM-4 uh, or the DSM-5? What would I, be correct? The latest findings on, in psychology. Okay, so like, what would be the reason for gender dysphoria being changed? To the latest one. Oh, hard pivot on the topic, but so. Gender, well, no, no, that's changed sure, from the DSM sure, four to DSM five. Gender dysphoria being put on the DSM, I think it was because I, I it was just like um, making a more nuanced point on what the, they took it off or with yeah. gender dysphoria. Yeah. So, I think I, if I'm not mistaken, you can't call it gender dysphoria anymore. Yeah, I could be yeah, wrong. It, it, it does get to be confusing. It's, it's like making, I think it's making more nuanced, nuanced points on mental illnesses. For example, they talk about um, okay. like autism used to be a single diagnosis, or and the Asperger's was a separate diagnosis in the DSM-4, and then they change it in the 5 to be a spectrum, right? right. So it's autism spectrum disorder. So I think it's just like they add layers of nuance on it and find mm -hmm. that things like gender dysphoria were maybe misunderstood or not nuanced enough, so they move it into different categories in the new DSM. Well, two because things, like two things you just did. You just yeah. referred to transgenders as mental illness. Is that how you would refer to it? As transgenderism as a mental illness? That's what you just said. Yeah, you said they no, were I, careful in discussing mental illness when I mentioned gender dysphoria. I just want to make sure you can Well, gender me. dysphoria was categorized as a mental illness. It's not anymore because okay. it, what I'm saying is probably disseminated into okay. other so it's psychology no, things. So it was, considered, hold on, it was considered a mental illness and now it's not. Correct? Now, uh, transgenderism as a concept, sure, yeah. Okay, so it was like and now an it's not. And you just mentioned autism yeah. was kind of an umbrella catch all, yeah, and now exactly. there's a spectrum, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. And so, like, so let me ask you this. Well, really what, well, let me ask you, well, this is important okay. because you say yeah. it's, it's psychology partisan. Yeah. So, uh, a transgender at the time of the DSM 4 mm -hmm. can't purchase a firearm by your logic. Now they can't. No, because I never said everyone in the DSM can't purchase a firearm. I well, said, let's say that well, no. back then it was considered a mental illness. It was considered sure, a very sure. severe and mental I illness. I said psychologists should look at indicators for violence. Transgenderism in the DSM-4 isn't an indicator for violence. It was an indicator... Sure it is. In the DSM-4, it said that people... 42% would... attempted suicide rate. It's the biggest indicator you could possibly have of any uh, demographic of people. Transgender suicide rate. Yeah, then I would argue that you shouldn't have access to um, a um, handgun because that's mo what's most used in suicides. In fact, a different study that I didn't get to bring so, but up... But access to shotguns. No, but when we're talking about handguns specifically, when people have access to handguns, they're much more likely to commit suicide just by getting access to that handgun than someone without it who probably wouldn't go through with it. So that's another reason to be for a handgun. Violence. If that were the case, you'd think the United States would have. An so I would argue transgender. You would, you would think that the United right? States has an abnormally high suicide rate. It, you, Do they? I don't know it versus other. No, countries. they don't. Okay. Not compared to gun control countries. But again, my well, point here is you mentioned you mentioned you said psychology suicide. is not partisan, but it is is my point. For example, transgenderism is still considered gender dysphoria in other countries. Okay. Some people consider it body dysmorphia. So I mean, I would right? argue that an international panel. I would it argue partisan. that America has right better now, science research institutes and that we're on the cutting edge of psychology currently. Okay. And I would argue that we have better gun rights laws than any other country. We're on the cutting edge of that. And but then the point I would is, just look at the effect. You go and you, you, you rattle off a few... we have more gun deaths than any other country. Facts. Uh, that's actually not true. That's we actually not true. We, we do not have the most gun deaths of any country. No, that's actually not well, true. Uh, we do not have the highest... Western developed country. I can add that caveat. I mean, like obviously, I'm sure there's areas in like Sub-Saharan Africa. Well, why wouldn't we include them? Why? Are they, are you because, because they're inferior. No, because they're not developed, right? You have different. You have different levels of Whoa. development and industrialization. Whoa. Right. I don't know, you about have that. I don't know if that's really fair. That being said, as far as mass shootings, <laughs> I think last last time they ran the uh, the numbers, um, Norway and France were higher as far as mass shootings. As far as suicide, actually, a lot of these Scandinavian countries and Japan have higher suicide rates. Again, you could go through and go kind of assume that I'm wrong and fact check me on all of this. Sure. But I, uh, the main things that you went through were you said there are no mental health background checks. There yeah. are you said mass shootings don't use rifles. They do. Oh. You said five hundred uh, five hundred thousand no to two million. Uh, are defended. There are more than one uh, one mass shooting de defeated by a gun every single year, uh, let alone every decade. And you said that psychology is not partisan, and he just sort of accepted it. I don't think that any of those things are correct. And the reason I say this is because you are so you're such a smart guy. Like I can see that you are unbelievably sharp. And people, and I've seen this too, right? I'm a slightly above the bell curve, the average of the bell curve as far as intelligence. I'm not as smart as you. I don't are. know. You make a pretty good podcast. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy gets me pumped up because I disagree with you. So oh really? Much. Yeah. <laughs> you just picture punching me in the face. Um, well, hopefully after this, now you'll say, "Oh, he wasn't that bad of a guy." Mm -hmm. um, that being said, people can fall into their own traps, and this is also a reason why I don't believe that hyper intellectuals should be the only people in charge of making policy. You know, sometimes you need a captain, uh, you need a, uh, you need a Kirk, not necessarily a Spock, um, because sometimes people get into this rhythm when they are so smart, and they're generally the smartest person in the room. And I believe that you generally are. People don't call you on some things that are simply factually inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Now, I think you made a lot of compelling arguments, but I think if you remove the factual inaccuracies to some of your arguments, they start to fall apart. 
and um, that was what I most noticed. But people would watch that, and I think would certainly say that you you, you performed very very well. And I would watch that and say so. And I think that you uh, would be a formidable opponent for anyone. Yeah, and I, I completely agree with your point that tying up arguments and debating with people like this and figuring out like where you should be more specific with things or where you need more research is extremely important to the public discourse in general. So I appreciate this. Well, I pre thank you, Sean, yeah. very much. I appreciate. It. So you wouldn't want to ban us from school. You think no, no, not at all. Free all right. speech. Is thank great. you, Sean. Sean, everybody, it was very nice. So I hope that you guys understand this is not designed to stoke violent protests. This is not designed to be a gotcha. It's not designed to take people out of context or to just create some kind of a compilation video. What you guys did today, by and large, it was mostly productive, civil. I think everyone gleaned something from these conversations. That's what we're seeking to do, and I really appreciate that you guys uh, stepped up to the task, even though I know some of you were disappointed that it was you guys uh, having the conversations and not me. I really do appreciate it, and we hope to be back soon, guys. Thank you so much. Now, there are plenty more student editions of Change My Mind coming your way, as well as traditional installments. Stay subscribed, notified, and as always, join at lighterfcutter.com slash mug club. Hey there, here I am uh, drinking from my mug in a button down. How often do you see this? Never. So do me a favor and yourself, click one of these videos playing one of these boxes here, or uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell also, because subscriptions don't really mean a whole lot. If you really want to support the show, join my club. If you don't, then there's no helping you.